Hey, what's up? Welcome to securityplusPro.com. My name is Vani Hudson, and I'm so glad you're here. Today, we are going to look at three Windows commands, the netstat command, ipconfig, and also tracerT. Now, last week, we looked at ARP and ping, and we also talked about getting help on the command line and how to open up the command prompt. So if you missed that video, make sure you go back and watch it. Today, we're just gonna look at those three commands. So I'm here in my Windows 10 system, and I am going to open up Google because I'm bored and I'm gonna look at pictures of cats. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do is open up the command prompt. So I'm gonna hit a different way of opening it, which is Windows key X. And then I am going to hit A, which is gonna actually open up administrator PowerShell. So I just wanna show you there's multiple ways that you can do the same thing in, um, in Windows. Okay, so let's go back, clear screen. And we are going to look at ipconfig. So if I type ipconfig, you're going to see my IP address, my subnet mask, and my default gateway. That's pretty much what you're gonna get. Now, if I type ipconfig space forward slash all, it's gonna give me a lot more details. This information that you first saw here, this these details are actually located in my network settings. So if I go down to the bottom right corner, I go to open network and sharing center, I click on the Ethernet adapter, I go to details, you can see all that information is exactly the same. Except you don't see the DNS server, right? It just showed you these three things. That is why I had to type ipconfig forward slash all. Now, I get a bunch of stuff. I get my host name, I get my, my domain that I'm a member of, and you can see my network card, here's my IP, oops, here's my IP address, here's my default uh, subnet mask, my default gateway, and my DNS server which is pretty much what I need. Now, if I do ipconfig forward space forward slash display DNS, I can look at all the DNS queries that I've made. So what happens is that when I type in google.com, which I did a moment ago, the first thing my computer does is it says, okay, I don't know what the heck Google is. I don't know names, I just know numbers, right? So I need you to translate that computer so the computer, what it does is it actually looks and it says, okay, do I have this, do I have the IP address of Google already in my cache? In other words, have I already translated this before in a previous request? If it has, then it'll just use that. Otherwise, it'll go through the full process of DNS where it makes an, it makes a uh, recursive, it makes, basically makes a forward lookup request, which is a recursive request to the local DNS server, which in my case is 8.8.8. .8 .8. The DNS server sees if it's the authoritative server for that particular domain, in this case, 8.8.8 is, because it's owned by Google, Google knows what google.com is, and therefore it returns with a, a recursive reply to my machine. The server, DNS server caches the reply, my machine caches the reply, that way, whenever I go to google.com in the future, I don't have to go through this full process of, you know, okay, I'm gonna, I gotta send this DNS query to my DNS server, I've gotta wait for the DNS answer. So I know that sounded kind of complicated. Don't worry, we're gonna go into DNS a, lot, a little later in the course, but I just wanted to tell you the background on what this means. IP configs space forward slash display DNS is displaying all the cached DNS responses. So you can see this particular record was looked up at some point. This might be Windows Update or something like that. And it resolved it to this IP address, right? So that is pretty much what you can do there. And if you're troubleshooting things and you need to uh, clear out the cache, you can just type IP config flush DNS. These are actually some of the commands. I'm sorry. ipconfig flush DNS. And these are some of the commands that I used a lot of times when I was doing um, IT administration as the director of information technology at a large multimedia company in New York City. So those are some of the ipconfig commands. Another one is if you're on DHCP, you can type ipconfig ipconfig release, and that'll release your IP address. And then if you type ipconfig renew, that'll renew your IP address. In other words, it'll send out a fresh DHCP discover broadcast to all the hosts on the LAN. The DNS server replies with an offer, and then your client will send a request and the server will reply with an acknowledgement. And at that point, you'll have an IP address issued from the DHCP server. Again, if that sounds kind of complicated, don't worry, we're gonna dig into that. I, I know I, a lot of things I'm saying right now is gonna go over your head, uh, but I just want you to just kind of get the basics. And we're gonna get into the details a lot later but I, I can't help myself. I have to talk about some of this advanced stuff because 
you know, I know it and I love sharing it, but don't be discouraged. We're going to dig into it. Okay. So awesome. That's what we do there. Let's clear the screen. Let me close this whack here. The other option we have is Netstat. So if I start, type Netstat, I can look at a list of all the established connections on my machine. And so this is really good if you're trying to identify malware or trying to identify you know, something suspicious happening on a machine. Maybe you see that your computer is connected to an IP address that you didn't expect. So I'm gonna go ahead and end that. I'm gonna type netstat a and b This is my favorite command. Actually, forward slash find string and then I type established like that. Did I spell it right? Established. Man, I cannot spell today. Okay, so right now, this is saying that my machine has all these established connections. Let me explain this a little bit. I'm typing here netstat date space, netstat space minus A and O B. If I type netstat space forward slash question mark, I can see that the A displays all connections and listening ports, which is what I'm doing there. N displays the addresses and ports in numerical form. I don't want names, I just want numbers. I just want the IP addresses. I don't really care about the host name. The O is displaying the process ID for each connection. That way I can see what process is making this outbound connection. Is it evil.exe? Is it malware.exe? Is it Word? Why is Microsoft Word making a connection to a China-based IP? That could be malware, right? So it's, that's why I like to put that in. And then the dash B actually displays the executable name. So I always use that command. And then if you notice, I put this little, let me hit the up arrow. Ah, where is it? There it is. Find string established, so I can only look at the established connections. So this is my machine, 10.1.1.0, uh, sorry, 10.1.1.10. These are the source ports all the way down, and then these are all the IP addresses that I'm connected to that I'm, I'm established. Most of them are over port 80. It's not actually showing me the binary for some reason. I would, I would expect it to show uh, that Microsoft Edge was actually making an outbound connection. For some reason, it didn't do that. So I have no idea why it didn't. But that's pretty much the point. Use Netstat to look at outbound connections, and you can find out which processes are initiating those connections. Lastly, we'll do Tracer T. This is pretty cool. If I do Tracer T, Google.com, it's going to basically make send um, an ICMP message, and along and it's going to uh, on each message, it's going to decrement what's called a TTL value, time to live. Each router that it hits, when the package is received by the router, the router is going to decrement the TTL. And when the TTL gets to zero, it actually sends a response back. And the response includes the sender's IP address. And so basically you've got this packet that's being sent through the internet to the destination, which in this case is google.com. You have a bunch of routers in between. Each router is decorating the TTL and then sending back its IP address. So we basically get a path. We, we get a path, we get a path that the, the packet is traversing. Now in this case, you can see in step nine, I am getting a timeout and that's probably because this device is a firewall of some kind and it might be blocking ICMP messages, which some organizations do that because it's a good, good, a good tip for security. Another really cool trick, I just thought about this. If you type path ping google.com, it's pretty much the same thing, but it's just a more modern version of Tracer T. Okay, so again, I hope you like this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe, make sure you thumb it up if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not, and you're on my website, securityplusco.com, make sure you scroll down and you, sorry, I just hiccuped. <laughs> make sure you scroll down and you join our mailing list. I'll send you a bunch of content, everything you need to pass the, uh, the Security Plus exam. And I include, I send information to my, uh, to my mailing list that I don't send to people that just view the videos on YouTube or just go to the website and you actually subscribe, okay? So I look forward to seeing you. Next week, we're gonna dig into Kali Linux. I'm gonna show you the Linux terminal and you're gonna learn some really cool, uh, really cool uh, commands that you need to type on Linux. If you're liking these videos, let me know, leave a comment, thumb it up, subscribe, join my mailing list and have a lot of fun. I will see you next week and I'll see you then. All right.